The derivatives genie is now well out of the bottle, and these instruments will almost certainly multiply in variety and number until some event makes their toxicity clear. In my view, derivatives are financial weapons of mass destruction, carrying dangers that, while now latent, are potentially lethal. Warren Buffett, Berkshire Hathaway, 2002 Annual Report The GameStop surge cast harsh light on a new paradigm for retail investors. As you may know, derivatives are freely available in a retail setting, primarily due to the efforts of upstart brokers. While much has been written on the Robinhood business model, link in the box below, can we tease apart the outsized returns reported in mainstream media to better understand the nature of these financial WMDs? Of course, any discussion of derivative returns in a principled fashion must be understood via the Black-Scholes equation, which, like Newtonian mechanics, is incorrect but inherently useful. Further, derivatives can be registered in the canonical capital asset pricing model to determine its place in the efficient frontier. The argument is that descriptive statistics, sharp ratio, apply to retail, technology, or innovation-targeted portfolios, and derivatives add to the long tail from which black swan events lurk. Even in the general dominance of algorithmic fast trading, the classic long-short risk book has now proven weakness towards intelligent agents. There really can't be another GME, said legendary Silicon investor Michael Burry in a since-deleted tweet. Nothing else is, was, even close to as shorted, 100 plus percent afloat. So small, microcap, and so hated, ignored, dismissed prior to the big short squeeze. It was a uniquely perfect setup. There won't be another like it, much like the big short. The standard capum allows evaluation of the risk and return contribution of individual instruments to a risk-optimal portfolio. In particular, it factors the variance or beta of the instrument with respect to its rate of return, less the risk-free rate. A naive analysis of capum with regards to derivatives implies expansion of the efficient frontier, i.e. the linear combination of instruments that forms a rational basis for portfolio construction vis-a-vis -vis risk management. Taken to its natural conclusion, the multiplication of financial instruments as the product of financial engineering increases the optionality of portfolio management. Cue the entrance of Buffett's ominous warnings that stand as bellwethers, if not of pure derivative arrangements, then certainly pression of the collateralized debt obligations causative of the 2008 financial crisis. Inspired by Buffett's partner Charlie Munger's homey entreaties, the consideration is when forbearance is warranted and where properly executed strategies may deliver outsized returns when interrogating market assumptions. The modern approach, as evidenced by hedge fund operations, rests primarily on market assumption evaluation in context of CAPM and available instruments, derivatives being first approximation terms. For example, strategies that evaluate when the assumptions of CAPM and derivative pricing re black shows is violet. Structure is created to restore rationality and efficiency to market operations. Innovation investments must be structured in a principled fashion with regards to volatility and underlying distributions, i.e. the standard normal distribution assumption IID cannot necessarily be held as axiomatic. Evaluating probability distribution assumptions in a principled fashion is a sensible usage as opposed to naked directional methods inferring innovative action for which there is no causative agent created by the capital allocation. On the flip side, the contrapositive position of scraping the tail distribution for returns, as engaged by naked short sellers, has been revealed to be the proverbial collecting returns before the steamroller. By combing the insight of Buffett and Munger, we can evaluate the proper use of derivatives while not abandoning fundamental capum based modeling and analysis. As George Box said, all models are incorrect, but some are useful. In order to be successful with derivatives, the purchaser or issuer should preferably be correct in three dimensions. Correct about one, timing as the contracts have a defined expiration with European style derivatives transacted at expiry while American options have greater optionality. Two, correct about direction. And here we don't limit assumptions to simple up or down, Flat is a perfectly reasonable direction. Three, and of course the underlying instrument is the correct instrument. While simple, an interest rate prediction can be manifested 
over the entire complex multi-dimensional selection of bond composites with different maturities, durations, and convexities. Buffett, in recent memory, has been well known for writing covered calls on his large Wells Fargo investment, though it was a minority of his portfolio. He himself does use derivatives. To avoid any Archegos-style blow-ups, these leveraged instruments should be held in proportion to the confidence of the prediction and perhaps at least a half or quarter sizing to respect volatility leading to quality of life for the manager. Metaphorically, it is only by turning derivative weapons to plowshares to axiomatically harvest return on the proper first and higher order approximations to tail risk do strategies find sustainable outsized returns. Intelligent agents with baked-in long-tail Bayesian assumptions act through reinforcement to seek black swans, transmuting them not to monsters, but unicorns of outsized returns.